Welcome to the worship service of the First Presbyterian Church of Asheville, North Carolina on this Easter Sunday. I'm glad that you found us in this virtual time of worship. If you want to learn more about our congregation, I invite you to look on our website at fpcashville.org. You'll also find information there about our in-person worship plans that are coming in just a few weeks. You'll find a connect link where you can leave more information about yourself. We would love to hear from you. And a worship response form where you can let us know that you were worshiping with us today. We're going to be serving communion a little later in the service, so you may want to pause the video now and get what you will need. Uh, bread or cracker, wine, juice, or water will work just fine. And now I invite you to lift up your heart to the Lord and give thanks to the Lord our God. came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! When they went in, they expected to see death, but they did not find the body. And while they were wondering, two messengers gleamed like lightning beside them. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Do not look for the living among the dead. He's not here. Remember what Jesus had said. Christ will rise again. Hallelujah! Christ is risen today. Hallelujah!
Happy Easter. I want to invite the children to come close and celebrate with me. It's the day we celebrate Jesus, risen and alive. If you've been following along with us during Lent, you might remember that six weeks ago, we made an Alleluia banner just before Ash Wednesday, and then we put it away. We put away the Alleluias. We turned it over. We don't say or sing Alleluia in worship for six whole weeks because we are getting ready for the mystery of Easter. And all during Lent, we have remembered Jesus. We've been telling stories about him. In your Faith at Home kit for this week, you have two cards that you can use to tell the story of Jesus. And you'll find the video that goes with those cards on our website. Today, we get to bring back the Alleluias because Jesus is risen. We've already said and sung Alleluia, and you can listen in worship for more Alleluias. It means praise the Lord. Last year, some of you helped tell the story of the very first Easter, and here it is again. Alleluia, friends, Jesus is risen. Today is Easter. The day that we celebrate the mystery that Jesus died. And that God made him alive again. This is a tomb. It is a special place for the dead. When Jesus died, his friends took his body from the cross and put it here. They rolled a huge stone in front to close it. Mary Magdalene loved Jesus very much. So, early Sunday morning, Mary and her friends went back to the tomb. The tomb is open! Jesus is gone! Where is he? they cried. Then the angel said, don't be afraid. Be joyful. Jesus is alive! Go tell the disciples that Jesus is risen from the dead. But Mary Magdalene would not leave. She stood crying. Then someone said, Who are you looking for? And he called her by name, Mary. She knew the sound of his voice. It was Jesus. Jesus is alive! Mary Magdalene was so happy she couldn't help but tell Jesus' friends. I have seen the Lord. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen! Jesus is risen. He is risen. Jesus has risen. Lord is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. 
so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins, joining together. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant, given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Death has been defeated. Shout it from the rooftops. Jesus Christ is alive today. Alleluia. Sisters and brothers, declare with me the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. there is a peace that we know because Christ is risen. We invite you today to reach out and pass the peace of Christ with someone else. Join with me in our responsive peace. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Alleluia. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out. Hallelujah. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Hallelujah. Christ is our peace, the indestructible peace we now share with each other. Hallelujah. The peace of Christ be with you. Would you join with me in prayer as we prepare to hear God's word to us today? O oh God, the risen Christ revealed himself to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Feed us with the bread of life and break open our hearts that we may know him not only in the good news of the scriptures, but risen in the midst of your pilgrim people. Amen. Beginning of worship, our youth shared with us the story of Easter morning. This is the story of what happened Easter afternoon. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. 
and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They, they were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going to go on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened. They recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord is risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from our risen Lord Jesus Christ. On this Easter day, we get to hear the proclamation of resurrection. And do we ever need it? After a long Lent, a Lent that feels like it lasted more than a year, with several detours through the wilderness, we need this good news. Christ is risen. Now, I suspect you might be thinking, I really wish we could have heard this good news in person. As I was preparing for today, I pulled out the sermon I preached last Easter. We were only a few weeks away from the coronavirus pandemic then, and everything was shutting down, or had already shut down. The world had literally gone quiet. Remember that? Never did I imagine that we would spend this much time at home and avoiding crowds being separated from parents and grandparents and friends, learning and socializing and worshiping online. Never did I imagine we would worship at home for two Easter's. I have to tell you today, speaking for those of us here in this room, we miss you. Especially today on Easter. On most days, you may not be sure what to do with your faith. On most days, you may not be sure even if your beliefs make a difference in your life. And even still, no matter where you are on your journey of faith, Easter Sunday lifts your spirits. Even if an Easter sermon may or may not do much for you, the music of Easter, a congregation that sings its proclamation with a full voice, will give you the gift of faith. A couple of years ago, Garrison Keillor wrote about attending Easter Sunday service at an Episcopal church in New York City. He wrote of sliding into the full pew, the trumpets that were in the balcony, the ladies' hats, the congregation that went down for communion and sang. Listen to what happened to him after communion. And then on my way back from communion, the choir struck up a hymn, I am the bread of life with a rocking chorus, and I will raise them up, and I will raise them up, and I will raise them up on the last day. As the congregation sang, a few people stood, and some raised their hands in the air, a charismatic touch unusual among Anglicans, and then more people stood. I stood. I raised my right hand. I imagined my long-gone parents and brother and grandson and aunts and uncles rising from the dead and coming into radiant glory. And then I was weeping and my mouth got rubbery and I couldn't form the consonants. 
I stayed for the benediction, slipped out a side door onto Amsterdam Avenue and headed home. That's what I go to church for, to be surprised by faith and to fall apart. That's why we come to church on Easter Sunday, to be surprised by faith and to fall apart, to receive the gift of faith from the joyful proclamation of God's people. In our Reformed tradition of Christianity, we affirm that faith is always a gift. We cannot think or read or work our way into believing. Reasoning and study and service, even our prayers, will only take us so far. In the end, faith is always a gift. In today's reading from Luke, we meet two companions who are struggling with their faith on Easter Day. These travelers, who are never again referenced in Scripture, were part of the small community of disciples in Jerusalem who stayed through Jesus' crucifixion and burial. They were with the others when the women went to the grave on Easter morning. They heard the report from the women that they had seen an empty tomb and a vision of angels. Cleopas and his friend didn't know what to believe, so they left. They headed to Emmaus about a seven-mile walk, carrying their questions with them. I imagine they were glad for the walk. Like you, I have processed so many emotions on long walks, many of them this year. And I'm sure they were glad just to be moving. They were traumatized from all that had happened. They had watched their friend, their teacher, the one who embodied the presence of God to them, be tortured and put to death at the hands of cynical leaders and a brutal empire. They were grieving the loss of their friend and the loss of all the hopes they had put in him. They had hoped he would be the Savior. They would hope he would be the one to put things right. As they walked, a stranger joined them. A stranger who turned out to be the risen Jesus, but hidden from their eyes. What are you talking about, he asked. And they told him about what happened in Jerusalem how they had hoped Jesus was the Savior, and how they had no idea what to make of it now. So, Jesus began to help them see. Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted the things about himself in all the scriptures. How the Messiah had to suffer and die and on the third day rise again. Jesus shared with them how the events of their lives, the facts that they had lived, fit into a larger purpose, a redemptive purpose of God. Cleopas and his friends said later that their hearts burned within them while he talked. Their spirits came alive as they heard that there was purpose and hope amid confusion and loss. Our hearts would have come alive on the road that day too. All of us want to know that there is purpose and meaning even when the bottom falls out of our lives when we wonder if our little lives have any purpose when it feels like we just meander our way through six or seven or eight decades we want to know that our story is part of a larger story that is held by love and grace We want to know that we are held in a story that is defined by love and not by loss or random chance. The good news of this Easter day is that God is writing a story of new creation and redemption that is large enough to embrace all of our hopes and all of our pain, and it begins in the resurrection of Jesus. When the three travelers finally arrived at Emmaus, it was nearly dark. They begged this new friend to stay and eat with them, and he agreed. And they sat down at the table. And Jesus, who was still hidden, took the bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to them. As they watched him do these familiar things, their eyes were finally open. The feeding of the 5,000, that, that dinner at Levi's house, the Last Supper, it's him. They recognized. I love the way that Gary Melkers captures the astonishment in this painting. Look at this painting on your screen. His style reminds me of Norman Rockwell. 
The two guys at the table are dumbstruck when they realize it's Jesus. The risen Christ was sitting at their table. And as soon as they recognized him, as soon as their eyes were open, they vanished from his sight. Their hearts were burning within them. Their minds began to race. Their feet began to run. They ran all the way to Jerusalem. They found their friends. They told their story to the others, and they gave praise to God. On this Easter day, we need to hear, and I pray that we need to believe, that we do not need to get back to church to encounter the risen Christ. You'll see here in these homes behind me, this banner representing the joy of the resurrection is placed in the center of these homes. The risen Christ will meet us right where we are, on the road, in our homes, at our tables, with our dreams and our disappointments and our questions. In his book, The Magnificent Defeat, Frederick Buechner wrote that it is precisely at such times that Jesus is apt to come into the very midst of life at its most real and inexplicable. And how might that happen, we ask? Not as we might expect. Not in a blaze of unearthly light, not in the midst of a sermon, not in the throes of some religious daydream, but at supper time or walking along a road He never approaches from on high, but always in the midst of people, in the midst of real life, and the questions that real life asks. Goodness knows this past year has had plenty of real life and plenty of real questions. How can we comprehend millions of lives lost to a virus that is too small to see? Why do our hearts continue to be broken by gun violence, by racial discrimination, by homelessness? How can our world ever become more just? Christ is present there in the weeping, in the working, in the questioning. Christ is present. Christ is present in the struggles and joys of our daily lives. You are trying to keep a marriage together amid the stress of a world that's been flipped on its side or welcome a new baby in a global pandemic. Christ is present there. When you're trying to keep a business going or keep your job and your sanity, Christ is present. When you're listening to the troubles of your friend or your college student or your teenager, Christ is is present there when you're feeding the hungry or lifting the fallen or trying to make the world more fair Christ is present there and when you say goodbye to the one you love for the last time Christ is present there the good news of this Easter day is that death does not have the final word evil does not win The world is not random, and we are not alone. Even in the face of all that is overwhelming, the love of God is not overcome. God is making all things new, and it started with the resurrection of Jesus. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Look for Him. With the eyes of your imagination, be ready to see Him. With the ears of your whole being, be ready to hear his voice. Be ready to be surprised by faith, to fall apart, and give glory to God. Amen.
invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we proclaim what it is the church believes. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand and by which we are saved. If we hold it fast, that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter and to the twelve, and then to the many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Having received God's good gifts, we are invited to live generously and to give generously. So we invite you to do that. You can make a gift either online or through the mail. You can give to the One Great Hour of Sharing offering today, the PCUSA offering shared by other denominations as well that goes for hunger relief and disaster assistance and other ministries or give your gifts to this church for ministries locally and abroad. Friends, the living God has given us so much in Jesus Christ, hope, joy, peace, and above all life. What can we give in return? We offer our hearts, our lives, and the fruit of our labor to the Lord.
It was not until the two of them were sitting there at table with a stranger that they understand who it was with them. As Christ Jesus picked up the bread and blessed and broke it, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. The veil that had been keeping them from seeing fully was removed. Friends, Jesus Christ, the resurrected one, invites us to this communion table. He offers us the bread of life and invites us to share in the feast which he has prepared. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them up, up to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give our thanks and praise. praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. You created us from dust and spun the planets into being. You breathed life into humanity. Holy One, you have kept covenant with your people throughout time. You were with Moses when he crossed the desert. You were with Esther when she spoke against hatred. You were with Mary when she wept. You are always faithful to your people, and you offer us love and mercy beyond measure. On this Easter day, we are reminded of your faithfulness and your power. Death cannot hold you. We give you thanks and praise, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Almighty God, blessed are you. You came and delivered your people from the throes of bondage and continue to work this day on disrupting systems. You came to serve others and through your actions confound the haughty and confuse the tricksters. We remember your self-giving love and proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we share and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one another. We pray this day for your creation, for your church, for the nations of this world. Wipe away the tears of those who weep. Comfort the grieving. Eradicate hunger, empower the lowly, provide for the needs of your people. As your disciples walked along the road to Emmaus, your presence transformed them into people of hope. Make us a resurrection people this day. Use us to proclaim your limitless mercy and grace through action. Be our guide and teacher, today and always. Holy Spirit, Prince of Peace, Spirit of Love, Breath of Life, come now. Bring to this hurting world the joy of your resurrection. In gratitude for this great day, we praise you now and forever. Amen. When Jesus was at the table with his disciples, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, 
and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened. After supper, he took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, he said, remember me. Friends, every time you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord. Come to the table, share in the feast which has been prepared for you. I invite you to take the elements that you have there with you and know if you are worshiping by yourself, you are not alone. We are joined in the power of the Spirit. This is the body of Christ given for you. The cup of salvation given for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of this meal, you have opened our hearts and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. Now send us forth from this place by the power of your spirit to tell the good news to the world. We pray in the name of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
As we prepare to conclude our Easter worship, I'd like to invite my colleagues to come here and stand with me. Our prayer on this Easter day has been that your eyes would be open to the risen Christ in your midst, in our midst, alive in the world. And so we leave you with the benediction that has rung through the ages. It is the song of the church. Say it with us now. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Friends of Jesus, go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. The peace of Christ be with you.